One of the most influential 3D software in the early days and up to the end of the 2000s is called TrueSpace. It started out in the 80s and helped a generation of 3D artists learn the basics of 3D modeling, animation, and design. TrueSpace had a huge community over the 90s and the 2000s, just like Blender did. And Todd Wiesendahl, the creator of Blender and the 3D community at large, admired its ahead of its time features and capabilities. But unfortunately, it fell victim to the greed of corporations and the rapid changing landscape of the 3D industry at the time. This is the story of the rise and fall of TrueSpace. TrueSpace was created by the Caligari Corporation, a company founded in 1985 by a Romanian-born engineer, Roman Ormandy. And just like many of the old companies, Caligari's roots trace back to the Amiga computer where Ormandy's early 3D animation software, branded Caligari, introduced features far ahead of its time. Notably, the Amiga era Caligari offered full 3D perspective editing in a single window, dropping the traditional 4 viewport layout used by most 3D software of the time. This innovative approach laid the groundwork for TrueSpace Hallmark intuitive interface. You see, the interface was entirely icon-based, relying on visual 3D widgets and pictorial buttons for most operations. Instead of text menus, users clicked on colorful icons with tooltip hints to perform transformations, modeling edits, and camera changes. This direct manipulation style of UI was initially unusual. In fact, Todd Wiesendahl, the creator of Blender, noted that back in the late 1980s, he was blown away by Caligari's interface innovations, calling it the first editor dropping the traditional first plate view and an inspiration for his own work. By 1993, the company rebranded as Caligari Corporation. It wasn't until a year later, in 1994, the company launched TrueSpace 1.0 on Windows, effectively bringing 3D to the PC. And here is the interesting thing. From its earlier versions, TrueSpace aimed at a different target audience of 3D artists. Their goal was to provide capable 3D software at a lower price point compared to its high-end competitors, like Max, Alias, Softimage, and so on. Early releases on Windows impressed many in the 3D graphics community with their capabilities, and observers in the mid-90s noted that Caligari's true space offered impressive features like animatable lattices for deformations and very fast rendering speed, which were similarly impressive to much pricier 3D animation software of the time. Another key feature that made TrueSpace ahead of its time was its support for real-time collaboration workflows. In the mid-2000s, as the internet became common, the company began a radical development. TrueSpace 7 introduced an online collaboration system that allowed multiple users to shape a 3D scene and work on it together in real time, which was mind-blowing at the time. Over the years, TrueSpace gained advanced modeling tools like NURBS, subdivision surfaces, Boolean operations, and so on. In addition to keyframing and physics-based animation, character rigging with inverse kinematics, and a built-in rendering engine, and TrueSpace's rendering engine actually evolved over time to gain some high-end capabilities, and even integrated with high-end render engines, such as V-Ray, to have better global illumination, depth of field, etc. From its early days, TrueSpace cultivated a loyal, an enthusiastic user community. In the late 1990s, when 3D software were either extremely expensive or technically forbidden, many hobbyist artists and aspiring 3D designers found TrueSpace to be a welcoming entry point. Caligari actively engaged with its users via forums and provided learning resources, which helped build a devoted following. For instance, older versions of the program were occasionally bundled as free CDs with the computer graphics magazines, meaning many newcomers got their first taste of 3D through a free or demo copy of TrueSpace. Throughout the late 90s and the early 2000s, the TrueSpace community flourished in online forums in addition to gallery websites. Caligari's own forums were very active. According to observers, there was a massive and very devoted community there. On the TrueSpace boards, users would share tutorials, plugins, and artwork and many stuck with the software for many years. At the time of leading 3D software, such as Alias's Power Animator or 3D Studio Max, 
actually cost several thousand dollars. True Space's price hovered around $800 in the 90s and eventually dropped to only a few hundred dollars by the early 2000s. This made it accessible to independent artists, in addition to small studios, also hobbyists. And the community took advantage of that, so numerous third-party plugins were developed, and professional users actually wrote custom scripts in Python or VBScript to share it with others. But here is the thing. TrueSpace wasn't heavily used in major Hollywood productions, because those tended to use Maya, Softimage, or Max. But TrueSpace, on the other hand, found a place in smaller projects, multimedia, or game asset creation, in addition to architectural visualization and some other things. In early 2008, Microsoft acquired Caligari Corporation, the makers of TrueSpace. This move was part of Microsoft's plan to enter into the 3D market. This is what people saw on the surface. But Caligari's development team was folded into Microsoft Visual Earth Group, suggesting that TrueSpace would be used to enhance Visual Earth, which is Microsoft 3D's mapping service, the competitor of Google Earth. In a press release at the time, Microsoft indicated that TrueSpace's technology would allow users to add fine-grained 3D content to Visual Earth as maps. As you can imagine, this mirrored Google's earlier acquisition of SketchUp in 2006 to populate Google Earth with user-created buildings. In other words, Microsoft was trying to catch up by buying Caligari and TrueSpace. So TrueSpace was their answer to SketchUp. So I think they paid a little to no attention to the damage they will cause to the community in the long term. The company's acquisition led to some immediate changes that delighted the existing user base of TrueSpace. In mid-2008, as a direct result to the Microsoft acquisition, TrueSpace 7.6 was released as a completely free download. Microsoft essentially turned TrueSpace into a freeware, removing the price barrier for its users. The company likely hoped to rapidly grow a user community that would create content, as I said before, for virtual Earth. And despite these ambitious plans, integrating a complex 3D software into Microsoft's portfolio was not without challenges. Caligari continued to operate its website in addition to its community under Microsoft's ownership for the time, and the founder actually remained involved. But here is the interesting thing. The development priorities were now driven by Microsoft's needs. So not everyone was happy. The fact is, some longtime users were wary as soon as the acquisition was announced. They hoped Microsoft would support and evolve TrueSpace, but also feared that a large corporation might neglect the niche community. Nonetheless, throughout 2008, the outlook seemed positive. The software was free, updated, and tied into cutting-edge projects. Caligari's team even demonstrated using TrueSpace as a real-time presentation tool, with remote participants joining shared 3D spaces online. At the time, it truly appeared that TrueSpace was shifting toward a new paradigm of web-based 3D collaboration and distribution backed by one of the biggest companies in the world. But no one saw what's coming next. Unfortunately, the honeymoon period under Microsoft was short-lived. In early 2009, just about a year after the acquisition, Microsoft underwent a company-wide belt tightening. This actually happened around the financial crisis in 2008, so they re-evaluated many of their experimental projects. And sadly, TrueSpace fell victim to these cuts. So on May 19, 2009, they broke the news in a letter to the community. Microsoft had decided to discontinue TrueSpace's development and essentially shut down Caligari's operations. The plug was pulled swiftly. Some online services were cut off as early as May 22, 2009. The once promising partnership had come to an abrupt end. This felt like betrayal to the community of TrueSpace. So as you might expect, the decision was met with dismay and frustration by the user community, and TrueSpace's discontinuation seemed almost ironic, given its ahead-of-its-time capabilities and the excitement that had surrounded the Microsoft acquisition. And many users echoed the sentiment that Microsoft move felt like a classic case of a large company acquiring a niche product, only to abandon it, leaving loyal users stranded. In hindsight, several factors contributed to TrueSpace's decline despite its technical strengths. For example, 
the broader 3D software market in 2008 and 2009 was kind of tough, because as you might know, this was a period of intense competition. Autodesk was aggressively cementing its dominance. Having acquired Maya and Softimage by 2006, in addition to having Max for a long time. If this was not enough, Blender was rapidly improving and bringing in many hobbyists, and True Space, even with Microsoft backing, struggled to grow its user base under all these pressures. The project actually was not profitable, so for Microsoft, I think it was just a burden. Some people in the True Space community hoped that the software might get a second life. There were actually calls to emulate what had happened with Blender just a few years prior. There is open sourcing the code or arranging a community buyout of True Space. In forums, lots of people were thinking about persuading Microsoft to release True Space as open source so that the devoted community could maintain it, much like Blender's community had done in 2002. Tan Rosendell, the creator of Blender, even expressed hope that when the dust had settled, they would find a method to make Microsoft accept a community buyout too. However, Microsoft did not agree to any open source release. Now the question is why? Microsoft was more likely to hang on to any intellectual property Caligri had than let it go freely, because they could use it, for example in the future in other projects, to harvest its technology and implement it somewhere else. Indeed, Microsoft retained the code, and no official open source conversation ever occurred. By early 2010s, the development of True Space was completely halted and the Caligari Corporation was effectively dissolved. This was officially the end of True Space, but in reality, True Space lived in the memories of many 3D artists, because for many, it was the first 3D software they used, so its demise was really hard to say the least. And there you have it guys. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. If you have any topic ideas, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.